in learning. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And if you ever want to see a fool, when you start trying to give them some wise counsel and give them instructions, and they're despising it, they're rejecting it, they're a fool. They're a fool. Now, jump over to chapter 2 and watch this. Solomon is instructing his son. He says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom. Now, incline, what does it mean to incline? I'm going to talk to the women real quick. Women, look at me. Sisters, look at me. Have anybody ever been talking in another room and you leaned in close to the door to try to hear what they're saying? I see some smiles out there. I see some, I see some, yeah, yeah. Now, brothers, y'all done it too. Y'all done it too. But ladies do it a lot better. They, they lean in. They incline. See, the word doesn't, see, the word paints it for you. They incline their ears. Because you want to hear. Well, the Bible is saying, decline, incline your ear. Incline, look, look what it says. It says, once again, uh, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom. But not to gossip. Don't be trying to hear the gossip. Don't be trying to hear all the juicy news. What's going on with Sally and Tim. But incline your ear for what? Wisdom. Wisdom. So we, when we're instructing newborn babes in Christ. Tell them it is time to incline your ear to the wisdom of the Lord. To the wisdom. And apply thy heart to understand it. Yea. If thou cry after knowledge. Now cry after knowledge. Remember, as a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word. What do a baby do when they get hungry? They what? They wham. Come on, what do they do? Wham. They cry. They cry for that milk. He's saying, as a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the word. Here he is repeating that in Proverbs in a different way. He says, cry after knowledge. Cry for knowledge. Don't reject knowledge. But what it, to, that, that it is it's the knowledge that's going to help you to nourish yourself and make you strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, cry after knowledge and, and, and lift up thy voice for understanding. When you don't understand something, let somebody know. Man, I get people call me all the time. Not only people from our church, but people from other churches sometimes. Pastor, Pastor Will, what does this mean? Well, I said, well, let, let's look it up together. Let's check it out. And we'll talk about the scriptures and they'll get an understanding. So, you know what the disciples did one time? When you look at the, uh, I think it's Mark chapter 4, when you look at the parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus told that parable and they didn't get it. Have you ever sat in a church and heard a message and you, you got some, but you didn't get it all? What did you do after that? Did you just leave and go home and dismiss it? Or did you do what I used to do myself and Sister Harrison when we were babes in Christ? We took a notebook with us to every church we went to. And we would, we would jot down footnotes, scriptures, and everything, and, and as much as we could. We didn't take shorthand, so we couldn't write the whole sermon. But pertinent points, we would write it down, and we go home and we dissect that thing. We get back into the, we would restudy that, that message. And that's why I got in this church, when we do Bible study, we do Bible study, and what we do, we have leftovers. We go back over Sunday's message, and then we add other scripture references and, and testimonies, and, and then you can talk. Other than, see, when, we're, when I'm preaching like this on Sunday, for the most part, it's one-way communication, unless I'm asking for a response. But when we're in Bible study, it's an open Bible study. And see, and so, so Sister Harris and I, we would sit at our kitchen table. We were just babes in Christ, 23 years old. And we would 
Just go back in the Word. We get our Bibles. We get the dictionary. We bought some Bible dictionaries. We bought a W.E. Vines, New Testament Word. Our, our pastor instructed us very good that, look, y'all, I need some study helps. We got the Strong's Concordance and, and a who's who in the Bible because we want to know who were some of these people. And we got all those study helps. And we were just fans in Christ. And because we sought diligently, diligently. See, in, in the Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible tells us to seek the Lord diligently. It says that, that in, uh, I believe it's 11, 6. It says, when you come to God, you must believe that God is. And God is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And if you want God's reward, you want to be diligently seeking. So we diligently sought the Lord. And within that first year, my pastor was asking me to teach Sunday school. I was just a babe in Christ. But within the first year, he was asking me because he saw that we were growing rapidly. Not necessarily because of all of his teaching, but because of our earnest heart to learn God's word. So as you minister to people, you, you let them know that it's important that they learn God's word. That they cry after. And those disciples, what they did, when they didn't get it, they you read it. They went to Jesus apart. In other words, they went over, the 12 apostles caught Jesus by himself and said, we got to talk to you, boss. Will Harris's uh, paraphrase, we got to talk to you, boss. You told that parable, but you know, we don't quite understand it. He said unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the Lord. And then he broke it down for them. He broke it down for them. And sometimes, you know, uh, if you're not able to break something down for somebody, get help. Get help. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, let's go back to, uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Say amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. And, I, and I'm not preaching and shouting sometimes like I do. I know I'm very passionate when I preach sometimes and I get really wound up up here and get all sweaty and ugly and everything. But today, you know, once again, this has been a teaching. And I'm going to preach a little bit with it because you can't keep an evangelist, evangelistic style preacher from preaching. I'm going to preach. However, you know, we got to slow things down sometimes so what we can do so we can get an understanding. Are you in Hebrews chapter 10? Amen. Look with me at verse, verse 24. You're all familiar with this verse. It's important that we encourage people to join a fellowship. Because to get the word, they got to receive the word. See, and I'm against those people that say, you don't need church to be saved. Now, I, I agree with them, and then I let them know where they're off. I say, you do need church to stay saved. You don't need church to get saved because you can get saved anywhere. I got saved in a parking lot. My wife got saved in, 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 at, uh, uh, in the living room of the house or in the den, in our den of, of the apartment we were in, watching PTL on TV. She didn't even get saved by somebody leading her. She watched the, the praise, uh, 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 praise the Lord on television Heard the message, and at the end, like I do when I'm on the air, uh, I pray the sinner's prayer, and they prayed, and she kneeled down and prayed it with her, and, and uh, she gave her life to the Lord. She gave her life to the Lord. So you don't need church to get saved, but you need church to stay saved, to stay strong in the Lord, to grow in the Lord. See, because right here it says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. First, you got to consider that person to provoke them unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of them themselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye, excuse me, as ye see the day approaching. But not forsaking. Tell them, 
Sister, brother, don't forsake the assembly of yourself. Iron sharpens iron. And it's important that you get in a local body because God has a pastor for you to help you grow. See, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, when you look at verse 11 on, and, and down a little bit, God lists the, 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 the uh, uh, he says, and God gave some. See, after Jesus ascended, he also descended. And then uh, he, he that descended also, he that ascended. And he sent gifts. He sent gifts to the body. And God gave some of some, some prophets, some, uh, 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 I want to quote it right, uh, some, some prophets, some, some uh, apostles. apostles, thank you, and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what reason? For the perfecting of the church, for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ. For the building up. And so I let people know this. I said, you need a pastor. Because you cannot continue to grow without a shepherd leading you to still water and the green pasture. You say, well, I can read my Bible by myself. You can, but how often do you? A lot of people have told me, well, I read my Bible by myself and then tell me what you know. And I'll throw a scripture at them and they don't know what I'm talking about. Or I'll talk about something that they should know and, and, and they're not there. I say, well, how's that working for you? How's that working for you? I said, the Bible says that God gave you a gift. And when you turn down that gift, you're slapping God's hand. Come here very quickly. Come here, son. Hand me, just hand me your hand like you're trying to give me something. I don't want it. Hand, hand it to me. Try to give me. I don't want it. What if he was trying to give me $100? I don't want it. That's what we're doing. Thank you, sir. That's what we're doing when we tell God we don't want his church. And then another thing we're doing, we're killing ourselves. Because the Bible says that we are a part of his body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is there. We're not going to turn there, but you can write it down. But it says we're a part of one body. And then he went on after he talked about the, us being a part of the one body. He says, can the hand say that I have no need of the rest of the body? What, do you, what happens to a limb if you cut it off and set it by itself and it's not attached to the rest of your body? What happens to it? It withers. It withers. It dies. It dries up. So when a person who has received Jesus Christ has said, well, I don't need to go to church to be saved, you need to go to church to stay saved. To stay in the grace of God. To stay in the wisdom of God. Because, once again, you're despising instruction. And you become a fool. You see what I'm saying? But see, this is not taught enough to where people are getting it out there because more and more people are falling away from church. No, you're despising instruction. God has set up a system so that men, women, boys, and girls can receive instruction from him. And if you and I were not here today, would we be receiving instruction? God has given us instruction. And when we separate ourselves from the rest of the body, we wither away and die. You have to do your best to show them that. If they're being resisted, if they're being resisted, if they're not being resisted, when you tell them at first, as a newborn baby, desire to sit in the miracle of the word, it's important that you join a fellowship, a Bible believing, a Bible teaching church, so you can continue to grow. And they say, okay. And then you say, well, it doesn't matter what church you, you join, but that they believe and teach the Bible. But if you're not sure of the churches in your neighborhood, here's one of our cards. The address and everything, the times of service is on there. You know, point them somewhere. You know, once again, when it comes to personal evangelism, I'm not trying to get you to evangelize to fill this house. I want you to fill the kingdom. But get them in a church, a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, so they can grow. Understand? Yes. That is important. That is important. Now, if they happen to come here, praise the Lord. I'm going to feed them. Because the Bible tells me, go unto the pastor that scatters the flock. He says, feed my flock. 
Feed my flock. That's what he tells me in his word. To feed the flock of the Lord. This ain't my church. It's the Lord's church. You don't see Pastor Harrison's name on it anywhere except on some documents because we, we had to sign them to get the building. But other than that, this is the Lord's house. And it's for all people. It's for all people. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's look at very quickly. Uh, whew, I'm almost done because I'm, I'm actually skipping a lot of things uh, that we're going to cover in, in uh, on Wednesday night. But uh, oh, it's just so much. It's just so much. James chapter 4. And then we'll, we'll go to uh, Peter. We'll go to James chapter 4. James chapter, chapter 4. Are you there? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm there now. Amen. James chapter 4. And, and look with me very quickly at verse 6. Verse 6. It says, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Amen. But draw nigh to God. If you draw closer to God, God will draw closer to you. So that's something we can share. We can share. You know, um, I got a message that's coming up. The Lord put it in my spirit yesterday as I was talking with Brother Joe on the phone. We were on the phone, fellowshipping, and, and he said something, and uh, he kind of mentioned part of uh, verse 7. Submit yourself to, to God. And resist the devil, and the devil will flee. And 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 just in that, the Lord put in my spirit, tell the people how to make the devil run. So we got a message coming up sometime, I don't know when, on how to make the devil run. You ever want to make a bully run from you? I did it when I was a kid. I was always small. I'm still small now, five, six, 165 pounds. I might put on some weight after today, but... Uh, uh, but I was a runt when I was in elementary school and in junior high and high school. In fact, when I graduated high school, well, when I played when I played varsity football as a running back and, and a wide receiver and kick returner, I was only 127 pounds. I could hit hard. I was muscular but skinny, about thin as my nephew, my grandson here. Uh, uh, muscular and skinny, but real fast. I was a real fast guy. And so one of those little scat backs, it was hard to tackle me. And so coach put me in the backfield. I scat on through there. I get into open field, I'm gone. You know, uh, he put me a wide receiver. I ran good routes, uh, run a good out route or a good fade route. Quarterback drop it in my hands, I'm gone. So I was one of those little guys. But you know, the fact of the matter is that, that when I was little, I didn't have much meat on my bones. I was still willing. I was still willing. Where did I say we were going? Peter, Second Peter. Peter, Peter, chapter one. Are you there? Second Peter, chapter one. Amen. Amen. Now before we read this, I'm just going to quote a few things. I'm going to say a couple of things. One of the things, you know, and I'm going to just throw out some scripture to you. One of the things we also need to share is the ordinance of God. You got to tell them, it, after you are saved, it is important to be baptized. Baptism does not save us. It is but it is an identification. It is something Jesus told us to do. In, in Matthew, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 
uh, 28, the, uh, verse 19, it says, go, baptize him. And, and it says, baptize. So we're to baptize. And I want to teach you a whole lesson 